sample problems in particle size distribution in relation to mechanical analysis of soil or particularly sieve analysis. This is the problem. Following are the results of a sieve analysis. So we are asked to determine the percent finer of each sieve and plot it on the particle size distribution curve. Then secondly, we will calculate D10, D30, and D60. And for the fourth question or third question, kindly disregard this one. So we are asked to determine the uniformity coefficient and then determine the coefficient of gradation or curvature. So let's start. First, we need to compute for the cumulative mass retained in each sieve. I just copied the table, but as you can see, I indicated the opening of each sieve. Because later on, as we plot it on the particle size distribution curve, of course, we need to know the exact diameter of each sieve number. And then, third column, you write the mass retained. And you add another column, which is intended for the cumulative mass retained above each sieve. So, how do we solve for the cumulative mass? That's quite easy because you simply, first thing to do is you copy the first uh, mass retained. You simply copy it. And then to accomplish the second row, you simply add the previous cumulative value with the next mass retained value. So, 0 plus 40, you'll get 40. And then to solve for the third cumulative mass, you simply add the previous cumulative mass and the next mass retained. So, 40 plus 60, you'll get 100. And then, to simply explain it, you simply add this value to the next mass retained. 100 plus 89, you'll get 189. 189 plus 140, you get 329. 329 plus 122, you get 451. 451 plus 210, you get 661. 661 plus 56, you'll get 717. And last, 717 plus 12, you'll get 729. Take note that the last cumulative mass will also be the summation or the total mass. Try to get the summation of this. So we have 0 plus 40 plus 60 plus 89 plus 140 plus 122 plus 210 plus 56 plus 12. So you'll get there also 729. Why did we compute for the total mass or the sigma m we read this one as sigma m because we need it to get the percent finer so that's our next step so how do we do that you add another column so the fourth column here is intended for the percent finer but in able for us to solve for the percent finer of course we need to follow a certain formula and the formula is quite simple as well. You simply use this formula here. To get the percent finer, you simply subtract from the sigma m or total mass the value under the fourth column all over the total mass times 100%. So, let's do it. Let's calculate the percent finer of each sieve number. So, to solve for this first person finer, how did we come up with 100? So, let's call it person finer sub 4 since it is on the number 4 sieve. So, again, you simply subtract the total mass. The total mass is 729 minus the cumulative mass on that sieve number, which is 0, over 729 times 100. So, what is F4? Of course, 100%. Okay, next, let's try to solve for the sieve number 10. So, how did, how did we come up with 94.5? So, let's call it F sub 10. 
Again, you simply subtract from the total mass, you subtract the number of the cumulative or the value of the cumulative mass, which is 40 all over 729 times 100%. So, what is F10? 729 minus 40 times 100. So, actually, the exact value is 94.5130. But, we, we, can run, we can round it off to 94.5. Okay, and then for, 90, for the value 86.3, we call it um, F sub 20 since it is located on the number 20 sieve. So, how did we solve for 86.3? So, you simply subtract from 729 the value of the cumulative mass over 729 times 100. And you'll get 86.2826 or simply 86.3. Okay. And I guess it's quite easy. So, we don't have to finish all the columns remaining. You just repeat the process. Okay. Okay. Next is... Uh, we proceed to the third step. And the third step is to plot the percent finer on the particle size distribution curve. Well, I already have here an accomplished one, but as you can see, we don't know the exact calibration. Since this x value or abscissa is a logarithmic scale, and this y value here is a linear scale. Though it's easier to plot on this um, axis, but it's quite nonlinear. Actually, it's really nonlinear when you plot along the x axis since it's a logarithmic scale. So, I will show you a particle size distribution curve that is well calibrated. There you go. So, this is the blank particle size distribution curve so as you can see here you won't have any problem plotting along the y axis because it's linear the interval are constant but along the x axis the intervals are not constant it follows a logarithmic pattern and by using this uh, graph you can plot the values precisely so let me just show you for example you want to plot sieve number four has an opening of 4.75 mm and the percent finer is 100 percent passing under the 4.75 mm so this is one this is two this is three four 4.75 is somewhere near the five location just a little bit to the right and then 100 percent passing so that's how you plot it okay and then for example you want to plot along the 0 0.075 0 0.01 0 0.02 this is 0 0.02 0 0.03 0 0.04 0 0.05 0 0.06 0.07 and a little bit uh, in the middle 0 0.075 that's how you plot on the curve so you simply follow the uh, calibration given and plot it on the curve okay now let's go back to our slide that's how we came up with this plot and now let's do the next question so determine the value of d10 d30 and d60 so it's stated here that we need to calculate actually we can get the value of d10 
D30 and D60 by in two ways. We can either plot or we can calculate. But then, the calculation for these values vary with different calculators. That's why I decided to discuss this clearly. I will conduct a synchronous discussion since it's very crucial. But for this um, discussion, I'll just plot. Okay, I'll just plot. When we say D10, you will, you're actually getting the value of the um, opening size where the 10% percent finer will pass. Okay? So, as you look through the axis, this is your 10%. Right? This is the 10% finer. So, you simply use a ruler and see where it will cross your curve. So, as you can see, it's around here, somewhere here. And then, you simply, you'll simply approximate where it will cross your abscissa. So, again, if you will use this curve here, it's more precise, right? And you can readily see, for example, um, let's say this is your curve. Just, it's just an example. Let's say we are looking for D10. So, this is D10, right? And then, you simply use a ruler and see where it will cross your curve. For example, it, it crossed in this point. So, what is the value of uh, abscissa? So, it's 0 0.001. Therefore, your D10 is 0 0.001. For example, you are looking for um, D60. So, this is your 60. You simply trace where it will cross the curve. And then, you go down to see where it actually crossed your x-axis. So, it's 0.9, right? It's 0.9. Since it's 0 0.1, this is 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. So, therefore, your D60 here is 0 0.9. It's easier, right? Compared to the one that is provided in the slide. Let's solve for the value of uniformity coefficient. Well, actually, guys, the effective size is also your D10. That is the other term for D10. Let's solve for the uniformity coefficient. Okay, so let's solve for the uniformity coefficient. That is D60 over D10. So, what's the value of D60? D60 is 0 0.27 and then D10 is 0 0.15. So, what is the uniformity coefficient? So, that's 1.8. And then for the coefficient of curvature or gradation, that is D30 squared over D60 times D10. D30 is 0.17 squared all over D60 times D10. D10 is 0.15. So what is the coefficient of gradation or curvature 0 0.714 uh, and that's it okay that's quite easy so you just simply remember this formula here d60 over d10 for the uniformity coefficient and then for the coefficient of gradation or coefficient of curvature d30 squared all over d60 times d10 so that's it. That ends our discussion. See you on our synchronous discussion.